Well, hello everybody. Stephen Butler here. Uh, and I have been asked by the great folks at Coffin Comics to bring to you today um, an art tutorial video. Uh, tutorial, maybe tell you a little bit about my background, where I come from, my 30 plus year career in the uh, comic book industry, um, and uh, share with you a little bit about what I'm working on right now, which is an actually a uh, co Coffin Comics uh, interior project, uh, one that I've been doing a lot of uh, covers uh, for the Coffin uh, comic series, Lady Death mostly, uh, but now I'm doing uh, some interiors and uh, I'm actually really excited about it and I'm glad to be able to have this chance to show you a little bit about uh, my thought process about go going about doing these pages and actually letting you see the work being taken place. So without any further ado, let's get after it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the project that I am currently working on and um, part of what I'll be showcasing today in my drawing video. And uh, what you're seeing right here, actually this here is the script that I have to work with. Yes, we all always start off with a script or a plot. Uh, this is a, a, a script that tells me what happens on each uh, page. It has the, the di it has a dialogue uh, from the different characters that are speaking and it has a description of what's going on on each page. And, uh, the, I take it, I take the script and, and see it in my head. And then I go straight to drawing it on the paper. Now these are what I call thumbnails and they're really tight. You might, uh, some people have said your thumbnails are so tight. They could be printed like that. Well, they're small. This is just a, a sheet of, uh, of copy paper. Um, well, we called it typing paper. I guess it's called computer paper now. Uh, it's just an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I just turned it turned it sideways and uh, and drew uh, two pages. Oh, before I go there, let me show you this. This is the template that I was given. Uh, to these are the parameters that I have to work in. Uh, this was sent to me just like the script was in an email, and uh, I just printed it out. And then I, you know, shot my diagonal lines. I can, once you do that, you can blow it up to as big or as, as small as, as you want. It's still the same uh, proportion. And so I just uh, scaled it down, uh, uh, scaled each page down a bit until I could fit two, two pages on one sheet of copy paper. And then this is the story. Uh, the the uh, main character is a character called Captain Death, and she is a... How should I say it? She is a, a version of Lady Death uh, as if she would be existing in another reality, kind of like a what if uh, type uh, type scenario. And I've done a lot of these. If you followed my work and followed the uh, Kickstarters that uh, that Brian has been putting out, then you know that there are a lot of different version of homage cover versions of Lady Death out there. Captain Death being one of one of the one of the main ones, I think I've probably done more versions of Lady Death as Captain Death than any of the other homage versions. I could be wrong, but I, I know I've drawn her at least four or five times on the different covers that I've done. And this one, uh, I was asked to, It's a. it takes place in kind of like a World War II setting, but a World War II that that is like only the coffin comics crew could deliver um i'm trying to tell you this without giving away too much but uh i'm i'm emulating the work of jack kirby who is my favorite uh, my f personal favorite comic book uh, uh creator and uh creator of captain america and creator of so many of the pretty much the the bulk of the uh uh, what we know now as the Marvel, uh, Marvel Comics universe. Um, we wouldn't have any movies, uh, around that are as popular as they are now without the work of Jack Kirby. His, his, his thumbprint is, uh, fingerprint is on everything. And, uh, we have a lot, uh, we, we owe a lot, 
uh, to that man and his efforts. Love his work. Love the man. All right. Uh, and so this is the work that I've done. You see, I break, I break it down into panels the best way that I know how to tell the story. And I'm emulating the work of Kirby. And so I'm trying to break it down into the type of panels that he would have used back in the comics that he would do. And for reference, I got, I have this, uh, I collect these. These are like uh, black and white reprints. Of, uh, of old comics and there's like a lot of this is like three four hundred pages in here uh, and collects a lot of issues and these are from the uh, original tales of suspense run uh, that that ran back in the in the 60s when the what we know of as the Marvel comics of today first uh, came into existence I'm trying to find the story where it's like his origins this is it I think which is like his origin story. Here, there he is, the origin of Captain America. And this is prime uh, Jack Kirby. And uh, it says here it's inked by Frank Frank Ray. That was, uh, that was a guy named Frank Giacoya who was having to uh, moonlight because I think he was working at another company and they didn't like you to work for other companies back then. So uh he was he had to change his name to uh frank ray to uh keep from getting into trouble i guess um anyway uh this is the type of stuff that i'm that i'm using as not so much for visual reference but as a as a jump starting point uh for me to uh to actually do the do the pages and there this is there's this stuff is just chock full this is these could be like these books here could be taught as textbooks for uh, for beginners that are into uh, that want to get into the uh, into the comic uh, art, especially superheroic type of uh, storytelling. Uh, they cover the nuts and bolts, everything uh, from from uh, the way the story is told, from the way the panels are laid out, the grids uh, that are put down, to the dynamic type of storytelling. Uh, to just even word balloon placement, because all of that stuff is so important in getting a, in getting a solid, uh, well crafted uh, uh, comic book comic book page. The onomatopoeia barum uh, is so is so important, and I I love that stuff. This is part. Without this, this would not have the impact that it does, and so. It makes the onomatopoeia part of the actual, of the actual word. Look at this, thum, 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 thum. Uh, it just really sucks you in. At least it does for me. It did for me as a as a kid of five years old, and it's still doing it now. And I'm <laughs> in my fifties. So anyway, uh, just wanted to share that with you before I actually start start working. But you can, as you can see, I've done all of the thumbnails here. I did two 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 a page. And so, but that's it. That's the whole story. And I don't want to show, I don't want to show you everything because I, I want you to, I want you to get the book and enjoy it. Uh, but this is, uh, this is how I, uh, how I start my work. And I take it from the thumbnail uh, stage and, uh, and after, after uh, I talk with Brian, show it to him and he approves approves uh, it uh, I take it and I blow the I just take it to a photocopy photocopier blow the uh, pages up to the size that I'm going to be working in and here I'm I'm having to I had to blow it up in different in different layers because it, Brian asked for the character of Captain Death to be larger on the page and so uh, I made several different several different versions I blew her up and pushed the other characters in the background and I light boxed it, which means I, I just got a I just uh, got a sheet of sheet of uh, Bristol board, which is what we work on, 11 by 17 sheet of Bristol board. Put the uh, put the photocopy underneath it, and then I have a then I have a, a light board that uh, that I that, that I can see uh, see really easily because the light shines through, and I uh, just trace it out. Uh, Kind of, sort of. <laughs> I'm drawing still as I'm, 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 uh, still as I'm doing that. I'm making decisions even while I'm doing the quote-unquote tracing. So uh, this is the actual page that I'm going to be inking, like uh, right now. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. Let's start doing some inking, shall we? Okay. First of all, whenever I start inking a inking a page, I tend to uh, I tend to 
do my straight edges first just to get them out of the way. I'm not really a, <laughs> a lover of doing straight edge type stuff. And so uh, I'm more of an organic uh, type uh, type guy. Stuff, the kind of stuff that I like to ink is more organic. But it all goes together. So I'm going to start by inking the straight lines. I'm just using this straight edge, uh, which is a uh, which is a uh, template, a circle template that I use quite a bit. Um, oh, and this is my. <laughs> These are my tools right here. I, I don't, I used to use a brush uh, dipped in ink uh, or a crow quill type pen dipped in ink. But these days technology has gotten to the point where uh, pens that you can, disposable pens that you can buy that have waterproof ink uh, are readily available. And uh, I find myself using those uh, pretty much exclusively these days. Uh, a lot of people say, well, where do you get that stuff? And I, I myself, I get them from a place called jetpens.com. Um, they don't pay me to <laughs> advertise for them, but I really enjoy uh, uh, ordering, getting my stuff from them, and they ship really fast. So um, hats, off, hats off to them, and if you would like to uh, give them a shot, please do. All right, I'm just inking her shield, which, of course, is <laughs> shaped like a coffin. She is Captain Death, after all, and this is Coffin Comics, so it just kind of is a no-brainer to uh, <clears throat> make the kind of uh, things that she uses uh, be appropriate to uh, her namesake and pretty much the overall gestalt uh, of, the, uh, of the Coffin universe. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Uh, like I said, I usually start off doing these uh, straight lines first. It's kind of like leave the fun stuff till last kind of a thing for me anyway. <clears throat> Take a drink. All right. <clears throat> and, um... A lot of people ask me, uh, how long do you work? How, what's, a, what's a work day for you like? <clears throat> well, it depends. <laughs> uh, some days I work longer than others. It all depends. on. But I work literally every day. Um, <clears throat> most of the time on the weekends as well. Um, I'm one of those guys that love what I do. And I would probably be doing it even if I wasn't getting paid for it. I'm very thankful that I am getting paid for it. Um, and I've been doing it for a long time. This year marks 31 years uh, I've been drawing comics professionally. Uh, and I've worked for the pretty much every major comic book company out there. Marvel, DC, uh, Archie Comics, um, <clears throat> Valiant worked for Valiant, Dark Horse, um, Kamiko, uh, First Comics, uh, a lot of comic companies that I just mentioned aren't even around anymore. Um, but uh, just to let you know that that's how long I've been around of, uh, and, and I've uh, enjoyed every, I've found something to enjoy out of every uh, company that I've ever, ever worked for. But um, nowadays, uh, actually, Coffin is Coffin Comics is is the exclusive company that I'm working for. Everything else that I do is, uh, like I said, private commissions for people, um, and I enjoy all of it. But I, I'm really enjoying doing these uh, this Lady Death stuff. The more it seems like the more the more I do, the more excited I am about uh, the the universe and what it entails, and especially whenever I was. Uh, asked to, to do this it's like wow i get to do these characters that i actually designed the costumes for uh actually have uh comic are going to be appearing inside the comics as in stories of by themselves i thought that was really cool and so uh there's a sense of i don't know being a kind of a not so much ownership but it's like i had a hand in that you know and it's really cool 
I'm gonna check up here. I hope you're getting this. Yeah. <clears throat> now that I'm sitting down, I can't see the <laughs> top of my uh, my uh, my phone that's recording all of this. I'm just wanting to make sure that everything is on the screen. Um. Again, I'm I'm in my fifties. I've been doing I've been doing comics for thirty plus, thirty one years, which is pretty much the bulk of my adult life. I uh, uh, I work at home. I have a studio in front of my house. That's where I'm at right now, and uh, it's where I do uh, the bulk of my the bulk of my work. Although sometimes I I do work inside in my house. Uh, I'm one of those guys that doesn't mind working with a lot of noise around me. Um, I, I did a stint as a caricature artist <clears throat> at Disney World in, back in 2007, I guess. Because at the time, the co a lot of the comic book work had dried up for me. And I was just kind of feeling the, the itch to try something different. And so I, tr I went into the caricature business and... Uh, what better place to uh, to learn the caricature business than at than at Disney World? And I enjoyed it. had a great had a great time doing it. Um, but uh, things brought me back home, uh, and I started doing caricatures on the weekends at a flea market of all places, and uh, found that there was a that there was an actually there was actually a market for it even there. Uh, so it was a nice like extra income on the weekends. Um, and by that time, the comic book industry or the comic book work for me had started picking back up. And I had uh, uh, discovered Facebook around that time. And I started posting my work on Facebook, just, just commissions that I had done for people at like sketches at conventions and things. And uh, people started seeing it and uh, and seeing my work because I would post fairly regularly. I guess I guess I would post every day. And uh, that it, it started getting people's eyeballs on it. <laughs> and I started getting a commission request there through Facebook. And all of a sudden, I started getting busy. <laughs> and really, and now I'm so busy, I'm, I've got like a waiting list. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a crazy way to make a living, but hey, I'll take it. Um, because it, it, it allows me to continue to do what I love to do. Um, but I'm not working, I'm not working for any of the mainstream publishers. I'm not on a monthly deadline or, or anything like, like that, but I've done it for years. And so I'm used, I'm used to it. So I treat these, um, commissions that I do for people in the same, in the same way that I would, uh, <clears throat> doing a, doing a, uh, a comic for a deadline, which I'm doing right now. I mean, this actually, this comic here has a as a deadline <coughs> and I am uh I am on schedule <laughs> with uh with doing the uh work and uh I just I was asked to do this video um and I thought that I would uh share what I what I do and a little bit of knowledge about what I've what I've learned uh with you guys um you can see I'm turning the page and I'm having to check and make sure that I'm on the, on the screen so far so good i know i have a parameter right here that i have to work work around <clears throat> but you see i'm flipping the page around and hey it's okay to do that i uh i don't i never keep the page page still i'm uh usually not working in silence either um, like i said i can work with people all around me that's one of the things that i that i learned when i was at uh at disney world i I mean, you pretty much that. Whenever you're a caricature artist, it it, it takes a almost a whole new skill set than drawing, you know, comics alone. It's a solitary job that we do. Don't you don't talk to anybody usually whenever you're whenever you're working, um, except if you're talking on the phone or whatever. And I don't really even do a whole lot of that anymore now that texting has become such a <clears throat> preferred method of uh, communication. I don't even I don't even talk on the phone with a whole lot of people anymore. Um, it's just my phone doesn't <laughs> doesn't ring that much unless it's a bill collector. Uh, so doing the work will keep those guys at bay anyway. Um, but uh, as you can see, I'm almost done with this shield. Um, 
Hey, here's another thing that I, I would like to uh, say. Doing these, doing these uh, covers for for Coffin Comics, these all these homage covers, it is just as much of a treat for me to see the finished product as uh, as it is for you guys to see whenever they come out on the uh, advertising the, uh, for the Kickstarters. And a lot of times that's when I first see the finished uh, colored project myself, and it is a treat to see these. Uh, uh, the, the coffin guys, Brian, has assembled such a such a cool uh, brigade <laughs> of working artists that are just all just top notch, and uh, that's down from the 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 pencil artists, the inkers, the colorists, the the designers, the letterers. Uh, everything is just a, a top notch operation. I'm glad to be a part of it. And it's just really cool to see it. It's almost like it's seeing, seeing my work with a, with a new set of eyes. You know, if that makes any sense. Because the the colorists and the, the designer, the the, uh, the guys that do the designs. Which, in my case, uh, a guy named Dan Feldmeyer, does um, just an outstanding job doing the doing the uh the logo design and the lettering for all of the books that have been that have been coming out and uh he just does stellar work but uh but everybody that works uh that works on these projects are just doing just doing an awesome job okay so i'm trying to see if there's something else that i need a a, a line around <coughs> and i see it <coughs> i am now going to do the border <laughs> because it needs to be inked as well uh this is a this is a story that i'm going to do and i'm going to be drawing uh that's going to be self-contained when i mean that <coughs> what i mean by that is uh there won't be any bleed pages on in this comic uh, there'll be here i guess i can explain it better here a uh, bleed page is uh, is when is when the actual panels go outside of the, they go all the way to the edge of the uh, the page. They bleed off the side of the page. But in these comics, everything was encapsulated inside these, inside these uh, uh, panel borders, or page borders, whatever you would want to call so, call them. So I'm uh, now going to be inking the uh, the uh, actual page border here. with a, a sharpie, a fine point sharpie pen. And another thing that I, hear, I have a lot of people ask me <coughs> at uh, conventions and uh, store signings and different things, it's like, what if you mess up? <laughs> and I, I just answer, I try not to. Uh, after doing this for so long, it becomes second nature, but you know, stuff always happens. And so we got, I don't know, we got something called white out, white out pins, white, white gel pins, whatever, whatever we can to, uh, to use to correct our mistakes. And let's just hope that our mistakes get less and less because the more mistakes you make, the more time you cut into, the more time you cut into the, well, you know. Time is money in this uh, in this profession, so we want to make the best use of our time as we possibly can. So I am now finishing up. Um, I guess I'm would be considered a fast artist. I don't know. That's what people tell me. Uh, I, I don't really know. I can I can do a like a penciled and inked page probably in a day but it all again that all depends on what all is on the page uh, sometimes some like a page like this there's detail on it but it's not it's not like a city scene where i have to use the ruler and everything on every building in the background that you for me that takes longer than uh than a page like this which has more organic stuff and what what do I mean by organic stuff? I'm about to show you. <clears throat> inside, uh, inside here are a lot of uh, uh, what I call they're well, they're they're brush pins, and uh, this is my favorite 
I'm trying to find the one that's new. <laughs> I've got some old ones and I've got a new one that has a better tip on it. I don't think that one's it. Is it this one? Uh, actually, I'm not, no, this is it. I can tell. <clears throat> I can tell because it's shinier. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to ink this. This is a battlefield, of course. Um, and there's a lot of like debris and this is like a, 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 a tree or a post uh, or something that's been blasted and so it's got all these jagged edges and I'm using this brush pen uh, to uh, to draw the very organic lines it doesn't have to be and it does it shouldn't be uh, straight you shouldn't be too meticulous with it you, sh you should you know it, it almost calls for quick strokes to make the um, to make it look right, <laughs> to make it look worn and jagged and and uh, all of that stuff that you that puts you in mind of a uh, a war torn type place, and then you're just adding shadows onto it. And again, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking in the mind of Jack Kirby. How would he have you know uh, done this? And I've studied Kirby. I've studied Kirby's work pretty much all my life. His comics were the first comics that I ever remember getting. In fact, uh, he was at DC Comics, even though he was the father of them, of what we know of as the modern Marvel age of, of comics. <clears throat> By the time I started reading comics in 1972, three, at least that's as far back as I can remember, he was at he was not at Marvel anymore. He was at DC Comics and he was doing a book called Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth. Still to this day, that's my favorite that's my favorite comic book. And it was very, I guess you would call it Planet of the Apes derivative about a future where all the but it wasn't just apes it was all animals dogs and wolves and tigers and bears oh my <laughs> all different kinds of animals could talk but they still rode horses the horses couldn't talk i never could figure out what what was what was up with that they had to get i guess they had to have a way of getting around and i guess jack said you know nobody's going to pay that any attention i'm just going to have them riding horses the horses don't talk um but anyway uh that was uh probably my favorite comic. He also did a book called The Demon, Etrigan the Demon, that was just awesome. It was a very supernatural, of course, uh, uh, take on... It was still like a superhero comic, but all about the supernatural creatures and, and monsters, you know? It was like the creature feature. It was like um, watching House of Frankenstein on, on you know, on the uh, old creature feature uh, TV shows. Um, oh man, I love that stuff growing, uh, growing up and he did one called OMAC, One Man Army Corps, uh, with this guy that was as strong as Superman, but he had this really cool mohawk <laughs> and, uh, yeah, a lot of that stuff has come to pass actually. Uh, he was, which kind of makes Kirby kind of a, like a, a comic book prophet type thing. Um, but, uh. But yeah, whenever I was asked to do uh, to do this in the Kirby style, I'm like, yeah, I think I can handle that. <laughs> in fact, I've done a lot of uh, I've done a lot of uh, Kirby inspired comic commissions, whether it was uh, Silver Surfer, the Mighty Thor, Captain America, or any any one of the many, many, many uh, superheroes superhero characters that that Jack Kirby was responsible for creating just love that guy's stuff never could get enough of it other comic creators have uh, have been uh, have made an indelible impact on my life uh, I guess if I had top five top five top six guys like um, George Perez um, uh, Jim Starlin, um, Sal and John Buscema, uh, brothers, both would be, would be on there. Just both fantastic artists. Um, Alex Raymond, who did, the, who came before all these other guys and who influenced guys like Jack Kirby. Uh, he drew, created and drew the uh, Flash Gordon uh, comic strip 
Um, Hal Foster, same, did uh, Prince Valiant. Um, Russ Manning, who did a book called uh, uh, Magnus Robot Fighter. And um, also did the Tarzan newspaper strip for you. Love that guy's uh, stuff. But um, I'm afraid that all of them take a <laughs> In my mind, all, uh, Steve Ditko, totally forgot. I, sh I don't know why, but I totally forgot uh, about mentioning him. Uh, uh, creator of, uh, uh, with Stanley of, um, of uh, Spider-Man, Doctor, the total creator of Doctor Strange, and many, many other characters, the Creeper, uh, many, many other characters. So, anyway, oh, uh, Jack Kirby, yeah, all of those other guys that I mentioned, um, they, uh, I'm influenced by all of them, but uh, Jack Kirby is the one that I always, he's like the alpha. <laughs> <laughs> the alpha dog who I always always come uh who I always return to as my main source of inspiration i guess and so that's why it was so cool to get this uh opportunity to do this all right Pull this back up over here yep all right i'm gonna ink this line back here and if you notice this is a i don't know if i've i don't know if you can I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. This is a this is a Pentel pocket brush pen, and it comes with cartridges that uh, that you uh, that you just pop in, and uh, it's filled with um, it's filled with uh, archival ink, uh, waterproof waterproof ink, and uh, whenever I found found these, it, it's it, the bristles are I guess nylon bristles, but they work they work great. It's like inking with a brush, <clears throat> except inking with like a brush and and ink, except you don't have to worry about spilling, <laughs> um, and you don't have to worry about dipping every every five seconds. And uh, whenever I discovered these about ten years ago, I never went back. The only thing that I have to watch is the drying time, and I tend to work fast. And a lot of times I'll, <clears throat> a lot of times I'll go over places that I thought was dry, but it wasn't, and I get a little smear. But that's where the whiteout comes in. But anyway, this is my go-to inking. Uh, uh, this is my go-to inking implement of choice, uh, more so than anything, anything else, and any, especially when I'm doing organic lines like this. <clears throat> And you know, uh, here I've got to feel this to see if it's not quite dry yet. So I've got to be very careful. If, so, if a place isn't dry, then I'll just put a piece of paper over the, over it like that, and that way I can just go go on about my merry way. Another thing about inking like this is, you know, whenever you're inking, this is like separated into planes. We have a foreground. This post. These these. The shattered post here and here, <clears throat> those are the things that are the closest to the viewer on, on the plane. And then everything goes in planes after that. Uh, the next in line behind, uh, behind the, uh, the post would be the figure of, of Captain Death herself. And then uh, the, next, uh, the next person will be this, uh, I think her name is Dark. Is it... Is it uh, I don't know if it's Major Dark or Captain Dark or, or just Dark. D A R Q U E. Her side, her Bucky, pretty much. And then these, and then these, um, these undead soldiers uh, uh, behind her. Those are all on different planes. And I've got to be mindful of that while I'm inking because the farther away something gets back, I need to show uh, the distance with the line work. <coughs> by uh, diminishing the line width, if that makes sense. The things that are closest to you will have a thicker outline. The things that, that recede furthest, further, furthest away from you are uh, the thinner the thinner outlines. So, all, and I usually start doing the, the, start by inking the things that are closest to you to start with and working my way back. Not all the time, but most of the time. And I'm just doing the shadows right now. Laying 
gonna lay in the black down. If there's big areas of black, I could fill them in with a marker or I could use a Q-tip and dip it into India ink and uh, the Q-tip will hold a lot of inking work. All right, guys, I'm back and through the magic of video, I have finished the page. Uh, I finished inking the page, uh, page one of this uh, Lady Death, Captain Death uh, storyline, uh, this six pager that I just finished. And uh, I am going to continue on working. Uh, this is the next page that I have to do. It's all penciled out and ready to go. Uh, and hopefully by the end of the night tonight, uh, this page will look very similar to this page all finished. And now I have to go and scan this page, uh, and send it to, uh, send it to the, uh, the guys at Coffin Comics and continue on until this story is done. And hopefully within the next, however long it's going to take uh, a couple of months, you'll probably be seeing this, uh, in print. So anyway, I hope that this has been uh, informative. Hope this has been hopefully a little bit entertaining uh, to you. And hopefully we'll be able to do more of these in the future. Uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.